Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Alfred. Welcome back to Kingdom of Loathing. I'm looking, uh, I'm on this quest to find a bunch of pictures, I guess. I mean, if you're just joining me, I don't know what the fuck you're doing. You want to, you know, if you want to just start on episode, what is this, 32? You're, you're free to. You can't, but I wouldn't recommend it. Anyway, last egg gets Al. Hear a mirthful shouting and a general hullabaloo nearby and discover a group of men sitting waist deep in a pile of eggshells. Come on, Al, one of them shouts. It's 49, one more to go. What's going on, you ask? Oh, hey, you ever see the movie Cool Hand Luke? Sure. Sometimes nothing's a pretty cool hand. Good movie. Sure. You made a bet with Al here you couldn't recreate the scene where Paul Newman eats 50 hard-boiled eggs. And as a catch, guy holds up an egg the size of a softball. We're using ostrich eggs. you got to be kidding me. No man can eat ostrich eggs. 50 ostrich eggs. That's what I said, but Al's about to prove us wrong. Hands the egg, saying, here, you can do the owners. Don't have to cut any fingers off, do I? No, just give him the egg. You approach Al, who's severely bloated and green around the edges, and offer them the egg. He reaches for it, handshaking, but his eyes roll back in his head, and he collapses to the ground. In the hubbub, you grab a camera off of a nearby shelf, snap a picture of the egg as a souvenir, and wander off unnoticed. Who? Cool. Filet of tangy gnat. Fortleaf. This is a... Oh, that's obnoxious. Succulent fillet of tangy gnat meat. And should be able to call loathing called it Fort Leaf, mostly for the sake of this dumb palindrome palindrome joke. Yeah, I kinda suspected. Alright, now I just gotta find the next one. Oh, race car bob. Yeah. Oh we got a photograph of a dog. Cool. I guess we can just get going to Dr. Arkwood's office, right? Okay, we got a photograph of God dog, red nugget, and ostrich egg. God, dog, red nugget, ostrich egg. Okay. Ostrich egg, red nugget. Is this Burning Adventures? It doesn't look like it is. Let's try God, red nugget, ostrich egg, dog. All right, let's try cheating. God, red nugget, dog, egg. A red nugget. God, red nugget, dog. Dog, egg. Place them to the frames, you hear a loud rumbling noise. A section of the wall slides sideways, revealing a tall, narrow niche behind the stonework. In the niche stands the staff of fats. You trip, but there's a shout behind you. Stop, spots! Spin to see a bald man in spectacles and a severe black trench coat striding toward you. Stop. Nine myriad murmur. Put up rum, rum, dairy men in pots. Jesus Christ. I have no idea. I have absolutely no idea what you're talking about. Ow! That's when he clubbed you on the head. Draw, oh coward. That one's clever. He hisses as he pulls a thin rapier from his cane and advances on you. Oh, it's on, buddy. Ready your weapon and charge four, only to trip over your feet and fall on your face. Oh, tarts, a cuts, a cut strottle. Laughs the sinister figure. You stand growling and launch yourself at him with the same result. It's all your aptitudes and reflexes have been drained away by his evil presence. Leaves you beaten to a pulp and strides away with a staff of fats, chuckling evilly. Jerk. I lose a shitload of hit points. He seems to have dropped the second volume of his autobiography. To Love Me, Volume 2. Second volume of the autobiography, Dr. Awkward. Apparently co-written by Prince. Boo. Uh, to Love Me, Volume 2. Same volume is more the insipid, self-aggrandizing drivel. But there's a brief mention of a man named Dr. Alarm, who was Dr. Awkward's assistant. Then the location of his awkward, of his office. Maybe you could go ask him why you had a hard time fighting Dr. Awkward. Maybe I will. Inside the office, you see a guy in a lab coat standing in a sink, washing beakers. Step up behind the man and tap on the shoulder. Oh, Kel. Oh, hello. Can I help you with something? I'm Mr. Alarm, Dr. Mr. Alan Alarm. Do you want to work for Dr. Awkward? He flinches and I start to twitch. How'd you know that? Did you send you? I mean, from all the other way to the building to get away from that jerk. No, no. I'm, to, I'm trying to find a way to penetrate in his ineptitude field. He dropped a book when I tried to find him before and it mentioned you, so I thought you might be able to help me. You handed the book, which flips through the interest. Aha, he's made notes of some of his formulas. 
Tell you what, about to go to lunch, but if you bring me some food, I'll work on a counter charm. I'm in the mood for a bowl of wet stunt nut stew. <laughs> Ugh. Wet stunt nut stew? Just like my grandma used to make make a stock out of bird rib and lion oil and then stir in some sh- stunt nuts. My mouth is watering just thinking about it. I'll get to work on the charm. Should we finish by the time you get back? Can I find it? You know those dreadful NASCAR people inside the dome sometimes make that as bait in their party booby traps. Can't figure out how to party booby traps. That's... Ugh. If you can't figure out how to make the stew yourself, maybe you can find some there. Oh, right. I'm beat up. Have a little lie down. God, that's so fucking nothing. All right, let's, um... Lick my wounds here. Oh. Sun at noon, Tannis. Wandering through the Palin Dome. Look up and see the sun. Funny how you never get to see it anywhere else. High in the sky. From this position... You conclude it's close to noon, and from that conclusion, going to conclude it's the perfect time to do some sunbathing. How long would you like to spend? A medium. Oh, wow. Lie on the grass, get a nice tan. You feel an extra spring in your step and a little bit of extra melanin for your outer layer of skin. <laughs> That's funny. Taco cat. Find a party booby trap. It is baited with so many dynamos. They're trying to Catch an electronics nerd. Okay. So let's pop this. Didn't so many so many dynamos in here? Shouldn't it have been? Ah. Uh. Oh, Wise Grove. 14 monsters. Oh, I can do 14 monsters. Evil Olive. New Dung. Gross. Flee to me, remote elf. You're bebopping along the palindrome when you spy far off in the distance, an elf being beset. Beset on all sides by the iniquities of the selfish and the tyranny of evil men. Actually, she's uh, being attacked by a couple of taco cats. Though the cats a sound rescue, a beating and rescue the elf. How can I ever repay you? She says, I guess I can give you this ticket to our Elf Farm raffle. Nut for a jar of tuna. How do they come up with these? Ticket to the Elf Farm raffle. Do you feel lucky, punk? Well, do you? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> drop by the Elf Farm to see if your ticket's a winner. It isn't. Get a consolation prize. Tasty shortbread. Nice. A single bite is enough to fill the man... Stomach of a man. Yada yada. Chunk of shortbread made by elves. Probably live in a tree or something similar to a tree. Like a, a different tree. <laughs> oh boy. Stab bats. More so many dynamos. No lemon, no melon. But a different fruit entirely. No, sir, away. A papaya war is on. You want to smack dab into the middle of a papaya war. Don't you hate it when that happens? Nearby, you see a group of ragged soldiers cowing beneath a bunker, and a giant army of mean-looking guys march toward them. Papaya's poised and ready to throw. Let's leave into the fray. Ah, well, I should have seen that coming. Ready to pelt the oncoming army with papayas. You don't have enough papayas to do so at all effectively. You get pelted in the face with papayas until you get tired of being pelted in the face with papayas and wander off. I love how a lot of these encounters just end with, I got bored. Liam's mail. I guess they're trying to catch a Liam. He might still be under house arrest. Another tuna nut. Semite times. <laughs> That's... Oh, boy. Well, that old race car Bob sure did just whack you in the eye with that shearing wheel he was holding. Oh, stunt nuts. And a mesh cap. Another tan gnat, natwing. Wontons, not now, but later they will perhaps succeed in catching a hungry party goer. Denim axes examined. <laughs> Traveling axe salesman, check out his wares. You're especially impressed by the axe made of denim. Denim. Can you sharpen it? Someone's fucking upstairs. 
Does that come through on the recording? There's moaning and banging. <laughs> or maybe they're being murdered. Uh, trade you for one of the rubber axes, sure. Denim axe. Is that good? I would hope it would be. Whoa, it's two-handed. Never mind. Cut through anything except jeans. Back to the palindrome. Dome. A lad named E. Mandala. Gross. Oh, it contains the fingernail clippings. They're really going at it. That can't be healthy for her, right? She's going to dislocate something. Anyway. Reckon he just about smacks y'all upside the leg. Sniff'em Muffins. You've always hated that brand. Evil Olive. Today it gains a pound. Nice. Uh, flies away and comes out of the swarm and hats, some of whom are natally dressed. Swarm around you, make a general nuisance of themselves. Suck a few down your windpipe, start coughing until you get dizzy and fall down. Damn. Uh, a goddamn mad dog. You release it, making it less mad. That's nice. I, ooh, it's a big steaming bowl of wet stunt nut stew. You grab it. Something I will say, um, having played this and West of Loathing, which is this game but cowboy themed instead, I I'm, I definitely prefer West of Loathing. It's a more active, um, the combat's a little more interesting, and I think the writing is better. But, all right. Ugh, that's so gross. You return to Mr. Alarm and give him a steaming bowl of salty oil meat. Meat oil. I mean stew. Excellent. Mmm. Just smell of that mouth-watering aroma. No thanks. Any luck on the counter charm? Hands you a crystal on a piece of string. Here you go. Wear this around your neck. It'll nullify the ineptitude field probably. Probably? It's untested, but the theory is sound. Take your chances. Not that you got much choice. If you're going to get the stat back. Thank Mr. Alarm for his help and prepare the, for the laying down of some smack. All right. Let's equip it. I've got to sell some of these. I'll do that off screen though. Oh, for God's sakes. I've got it. I've got too many. Oh, we've got stunt nuts. Nice. Seriously, what the fuck? Oh, mesh cap. This. <laughs> This hat makes you feel like you're ready for some football, like a good old boy, never meaning no harm, and the South will rise again. In other words, tough but stupid. That's, uh, I, I only know that reference because of, um, Mega Jam. Yep, all right, gotta unequip something. Um, Red Mask, I think. Yeah. But yeah, I only know that reference because uh, it was also a joke in MST3K. Let's fight Dr. Awkward. After searching, you find him skulking in the shadows of the palindomes, fondling the staff of fats and a creepy matter. Hey, you, you shout, that fight we had? Call it a do-over. Get your best silver platter because I'm going to serve your ass on it. Dr. Awkward sneers and draws his sword. Go deliver a dare, vile dog. That's really good. Um, the mega gem glows brightly as you charge your opponent. Shouting your battle cry, War, sir, is raw. Egad, no bondage. Eva, I can stack Rod sad ass dork cats in a cave. Let's go that one. You don't know much about this evil, bald little man wearing wire rim spectacles and a black trench coat, other than the fact he's stolen the staff of fats for a nefarious purpose. Figure that's plenty enough reason to beat the hell out of him. Heck, the fact that he's evil would be reason enough, right? Some people say he's wearing a white trench coat, but their testimony is unreliable. Yeah, you know, that's the thing about this character model. We got the Staff of Fats and the Drowsy Sword. Drowsy Sword, that's funny. Let's dive into the bunker. Hey, we got three papayas. Nice. Now we can join the papaya war next time. Or eat them. Taste to eat, as it is fun to say. It isn't? Oh, fuck. It's another two-handed sword. Successful hit weakens opponent minus 10 to watch level. Pin sniff and bat stab, but nothing slashes like this sword. Deals a pretty decent amount of damage for something that occasionally emanates audible snoring. Imagine what it could do if it were fully awake. That's funny. We got the Staff of Fats, also two-handed. Pool cue with squealy runes all over it. 
owned by the pool shark Saturated Fats, like Arabia Fats, famed for his billiards prowess, but for his uncanny resemblance to Jackie Gleason. Nice. Nice. Um, now what? Let's craft the uh, ancient amulet and uh, Staff of Fats. The Staff of Ed, almost. Nice. And then I think all we got to do is the Cellar of Spooky Raven, right? How does one get down there? Let's check. Actually, I've been recording for eh, only 15 minutes. I'll go for a little longer. <clears throat> Excuse me. You know, actually, I've also got some other quests I should be doing. I'm banging pretty hard against this one. All right. Haunted ballroom. Until zombie waltzers. Poke them both in the shoulder. Tap dancing skeleton. Nice. I feel like I've read all these before. They were probably a really long time ago. Hors d'oeuvres. Nice. Desiccated apricot. Nice. Oh, we'll all be flat. Make your way to the pipe organ at the end of the ballroom. Straighten your coat. Crack your knuckles. Prop up your father's diary so you can see the sheet music. Let's play it. Plaster dust falls from the ceiling as your fingers dance across the yellow ivory keys and the thunderous notes fill the cavernous halls like superfluous adjectives. <laughs> oh, that's really good. Song is finished and the last echoes fade. In the resulting silence, you hear a screen, strange grinding noise from downstairs. Wait, let's head down. Upstairs down, nice. Wow. Mad wino. This guy's been down in the dim, dank, dark cellar for too long. So in the unhealthy atmosphere of the place and in bottle after bottle of Spooky Raven's Fortified Wine. Unlike a regular hobo, he looks filthy, unshaven, and unhinged. Sorry, I meant like a regular hobo, not unlike. Hey, I was homeless once. Crazy hobo notebook. You got this notebook off of wine. I've been trapped in Lord Spooky Raven's cellar for God knows how long. Here's to be a rough dictionary of shirts for hobo glyphs. You know, the sort of thing, the little marks that hobos draw on walls to identify places where you can get a free handout or to warn about muggers or so forth. Except the ones in this notebook uh, appear to be things like the formless one approaches or beware of night gaunts or in praise of the soul leader. They writhe when you look at them and it makes you a little uncomfortable. Uh, night gaunt is a Cthulhu mythos story. Possessed wine rack. Old splintering wooden wine rack that's been taken over by evil spirits. Oh. Evil spirits. God. Wants revenge against humans for the years they used it as storage. Bottles, that has a lot of bottles of wine on it. Presumably some of the bottles have turned to vinegar. And judging by its aggressive behavior, you'd say an equal number of them have turned to piss. Gets the jump on me. Bottle of vermouth flies out of the rack and hits right in your, your mouth. It's vermouth, right? Not vermouth. You're finding a skeletal sommelier. Reanimated skeletal remains of one of Spooky Raven's wine stewards. Historians agree on why he had so many wine stewards, and theorize that perhaps they were simply additional mistresses disguised as wine stewards. At this point, any academic curiosity you might have ever had is desired by your desire, overshadowed by your desire to not get hit in the head with a wine bottle. He uh, he hits me in the head with a wine bottle. Cuts you open with a broken wine bottle and pours wine in the wound. The blood flows like wine, and the wine flows like blood, and both of those things hurt a lot. Now the skeletal sommelier. Wow, he's like fucking me up. Got a dusty Zinfidel. Ooh. Let's take a look at that. Dusty bottle of Zinfidel from Spooky Raven's wine cellar. Zinfidel is renowned for its fruitiness, kind of like you. Zing? No, seriously, someone call this Zing Ward. <laughs> it's good booze. That's interesting. Another mysticality point, wine rack. Dusty bottle of Pinot Noir. His eyes go black and he recites forbidden words of a forbidden tongue. Uwa taidu shayim. Sound of that horrible speech makes your eardrum, eardrums burrow deep into your brain to make you escape it. Let's take a look and see what, um... Ah. It's a fetch quest, huh? Oh, we do need this, though. Chateau de Vinegar from a haunted wine cellar. Mad Winos, Calmelier, lights out in the wine cellar. Okay. Actually, let's take a look at the other ones. 
haunted boiler room, a steam elemental. Valve opens in one of the pipes next to you, and you brace for a cloud of scalding steam to come out. Instead, a little voice says, steam elemental is updating. Checking updates, one out of 256. Tap your phone and wait for it to finish. But when it asks you to log in and choose a password to fight the steam elemental, you refuse. After a few are you sure messages, the steam elemental puffs out and squares off against you. It uses its steam power to uh, propel a nearby model train, making it roll all over your feet. That's funny. Puff some steam into your ear. You get a life with a dreamer's dream. No, you get parboiled eardrums. Nice. Oh, we're fighting a colder guy. <laughs> there's so many. There's so many good puns in this game. Like, there's. I, I. I've encountered like a couple hundred of them by now, right? You're fighting a colder guy. You're here in the cold. Man. It's dark in there. Black as night, I suppose. Black as the black market, I guess. If only there was some substance dark enough to describe the darkness in the coal bin. Clang and clatter and the poltergeist rolls on all the coal into the coal bin into a humanoid menacing four. All right, coal. That's how black the darkness was. How silly of me. We got a hot coal, though. Let's take a look at this. Uh, we got Kiss of the Black Fairy. It's decent booze. It's potency two. A uh, bottle of Pinot Noir made on a dark and stormy night. Dame stomped grapes into it. She had legs till next Tuesday and purple feet to die for. That's funny. Then hot coal. Fire inside. Never understood the difference between an ember and a hot coal, which is why I don't understand the difference between an ember and this. Also, why you're not a professional stoker. Swallow the hot coal like a crazy person. Your eyes glow like a crazy person's eyes. You swallow a hot coal and intense waves of heat are coming out of all of your orifices. That can't be good, right? Okay, another coltergeist. Monstrous boiler. Boiler springs to life. I don't mean it startles you by switching on and do the things boilers normally do. Uh, its front grill twists into a malevolent face with flames dancing in its evil little eyes, and it roars as it belches flame and opens a red hot iron mouth to eat slash boil slash burn you alive. So, you know, look out. Nice. Now the boiler. Okay, I think that should be all. Let's take a look at the haunted laundry room. And then I'll wrap up the episode. A sheet covered in red and green tartan lifts itself off the floor and floats at you, making woo sounds in a thick Scottish brogue. Who says dead men don't wear plaid? Got a plaid swatch? The cabinet of L Dr. Limpieza. A wooden cabinet detaches from the wall and lumbers toward the doors opening and closing. You see all manning or cleaning supply, most of them branded Dr. Limpieza. Branded name that isn't around anymore. It's a supplies attack. Oh, we got <laughs> Yeah, why isn't that a thing? That makes perfect sense. The fabric hardener. Damage reduction 15, hardened fabric. This bottle is the antidote to societal poison that is fabric softener. Uh, <laughs> I fucking love this game. Got a plaid swatch. This is a single unit of plaid, which you've decided to refer to as a plaif. Oh, possessed laundry press. Device consisting of two heated metal rollers powered by a steam engine that heats incredibly hot and rolls them forward. The idea is you feed clothes into it and they come out wrinkle-free, but stand with the blood of the fingers you burst trying to feed the clothes into it. The spooky raven servants call this thing a mangler, which is hardly what you want to hear on your first day of work in the laundry room. No kidding. All right, another plaid ghost. Toss a cable at you. Dealing with the cable is doing in the laundry boy, but it hurts when it lands on your toe, laddie. That was the worst cut of section ever done. All right, let's see if that's everything. Boiler room. Coltergeist. Bram the Stoker. It's a semi-rare, though. That makes sense. And then a Turtle Tamer only. And we got the Haunted Laundry Room. All right. Yeah, that's about everything. Recipe. Mortar Dissolving Solution. Oh, was I only supposed to be doing this while I was... Ah, well. Better get blasted. We got Kiss the Black Fairy. Drink the bottle of wine and belt up a cloud of foul-smelling green smoke. This wine was infused with wormwood. Spooky. Four adventures. Three strongness. Kiss of the Black Fairy. Fortified with evil. Dire evil. Wicked evil. Evil evil. Way too drunk already. Well, that's okay. Because I got six minutes until... It ends. Um, 
so that's been Kingdom Loathing for this episode, for this week, really. Um, I feel like I'm getting towards the end of the game pretty well. I might make 50 episodes of this, though. Um, but I've been Alfred. This has been Kingdom of Loathing. Thank you for coming by to see me. I'll see you guys next week.